youth, before becoming a farmer and cattleman, I was a bank employee. This is how it came about. I was 24 years old at the time and had no close relatives. Now it's well known that accidents can change one's life. In my case, it was a tiny accident. When I tried to open the door to go to work, the key broke off in the lock. Thank you. I'd really appreciate it if you could send someone soon. Thank you. Bye. Yes, yes, I'll be late. I'm, I'm waiting for a locksmith. My key broke off in the lock. On the inside? In that case, it's already a more difficult matter. It's going to take me at least three hours, and I'm going to have to charge you $360 plus GST. I don't have that much money in the house right now, but as soon as I get out, I'll go to the bank and pay you. I'm very sorry, sir, but I am not only a charter member of the National Locksmiths Union, but also one of the principal framers of the Magna Carta of our organisation. Nothing has been left to chance in it. If you should have the pleasure of reading this inspiring document, you will learn in the chapter dedicated to basic maximums that the perfect locksmith is prohibited from collecting after the conclusion of the work. You're joking, aren't you? My dear sir, the subject of the Magna Carta of the National Locksmiths Union is no joking matter. The writing of our Magna Carta, in which no detail has been overlooked and whose various chapters are governed by an underlying moral principle, took us years of arduous study. Please, be reasonable. Open the door for me and I'll pay you at once. I'm sorry, sir. There are ethics in every profession and in the locksmith's profession they are inflexible. Good day, sir. Stupid moron. Sir, what address, sir? Can you repeat the address, sir? I'm sorry, sir. The National Locksmiths Union has placed a ban on any work in that address. Have a nice day. Don't be ridiculous. Monica, how's everything? How's it going, honey? So, you finally remembered to call. I can tell you really love me. I haven't seen hide no hair of you in almost two weeks. I'm nobody's plaything. So you can't get out of your house. You just never run out of excuses not to come to work. May I talk to Mr. Michelangelo Laporta, please? Tell me, was it the key or the lock that broke? And it was left inside the lock? Half of it was left inside and the other half outside. Didn't you try to get out the little piece that's stuck inside with the screwdriver? Yes, of course I tried, but it's impossible. Oh well, you're going to have to call a locksmith then. I already called, but they want payment in advance. So pay him and there you are. But don't you see, I haven't got any money. Man, you sure have your problems.
one day I saw an envelope that had been slipped under my apartment door. The telephone company was cutting off my service for non-payment. Then in succession they cut off my gas, electricity and water. At first I used up my provisions in an irrational way, but I realised in time what I was doing. I placed receptacles on the balcony to catch the rainwater. I ripped out my flowering plants, and in their flower pots I planted tomatoes, lentils, and other vegetables, which I tend with loving and painstaking care. But I also need animal protein, so I learned to breed insects, spiders and rodents, and, and to make them reproduce in captivity. Sometimes I trap an occasional sparrow or pigeon. As fuel, I'm slowly burning the books, the furniture, the floorboards. I discovered that there are always more things in a house than are necessary. I live quite comfortably, although I lack some things. For example, I don't know what's going on anywhere else. I don't read newspapers and I can't get the television or radio working. From the balcony, I observe the outside world and I, I notice some changes. At a certain point, the tram stopped running. I don't know how long ago that happened. I've lost all notion of time. But the mirror, my baldness, my long white beard and the pain in my joints tell me that I'm very old. For entertainment, I let my thoughts wander, or I pretend that I have visitors and I tell them my story. I have no fear or ambitions. In a word, I'm relatively happy. <laughs>